so our our next presenter, um, I um, had the opportunity of meeting him, um, Bruce Salt. He's from Verizon. He's in charge of uh, surprise, surprise, university relations and workforce planning. It's amazing how people in your position just happen to come up here today. It's like what a, what a shock. So Bruce was at one of our conferences um, in New York City. Uh, in December at the EY, um, formerly Ernst & Young headquarters, and Bruce made um, what proved to be a very, very bad mistake. Um, he came up to me toward the end of it, and he said, this was great. If, you, if there's anything that I can do for you, please let me know. And it's like, there is. On May 5th, you're going to be at the LinkedIn headquarters, and you're going to be delivering one of the presentations. And he's like, okay. So... You're, you know, I'm here. well, we'll see if it, if it ends up being a good thing or a bad thing. In about 20 minutes, we'll know. Um, Bruce is going to be talking um, about the uh, employee uh, value proposition. And uh, welcome. Stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Is this on? Can you hear me okay? Great. So that wasn't so bad. Uh, at the happy hour reception last night, Steve said, I have a joke that I'm going to kind of ding you with before I introduce you. So I was kind of standing on the side over there just panicking at what he was going to allude to or bring up. So that wasn't too bad. I appreciate it, Steve. So thanks very much. Uh, as Steve had said, my name is Bruce Saltis, and I manage the university relations function at Verizon, as well as our national diversity partners. So when Steve had asked me to be a speaker here, I was you know, happy to oblige. And then he said, we'd love to have you speak about EVPs. And I kind of took a step back. I said, ugh, EVPs. Uh, at Verizon, we have eight of them. And each one is a tremendous you know, global thought leader in their own right. And here they are. <laughs> and I said, well, it's 20 minutes. There's eight of them. I said, it's probably about two, two and a half minutes each. I said, but I'm not sure what a room full of campus recruiting professionals is going to care about Verizon's EVPs. <laughs> so then he had said, no, no, employee value proposition. And I said, all right, much, much easier topic for me. So the reason I make that joke is because there's not a lot, uh, there's not a, a sense of true understanding about what an EVP is. If you mention the word EVP to a lot of individuals, you know, executive vice president is usually what they think about. And to a college professional or an HR professional, we usually know what an EVP is. But for folks in the business and for folks that you're touting EVPs and looking to get buy-in from, they may not have a general understanding of what it is. So that's what I wanted to take a look at first. So, oh, you mean that EVP. So what exactly is an EVP? And as we see here, it's a set of attributes that folks in the labor market, um, potential employees, you know, perceive as the value that they're going to gain from joining your organization. So an effective EVP is, is going to extend that organization's reach into the labor, labor market, and it's going to build retention. So there are really five categories when you think of an EVP. There's the rewards aspect, the actual work aspect, the people aspect, the organization aspect, as well as the opportunity aspect. And there, there's both attraction benefits and retention benefits to a strong EVP. So from an attraction standpoint, when candidates in the labor market view an organization's EVP as attractive, that organization is going to be able to attract them much easier. And that has an impact from a compensation perspective. It's going to cost you less to bring folks on board that are attracted to your EVP. I think some, some research, and the research here is from CEB, the Corporate Leadership Council, uh, which is a great resource that we use quite often at Verizon. And it shows that if you're going to hire somebody from the outside and they're attracted to your EVP, it's going to probably be about an 11% jump in total compensation. Companies who have an unattractive EVP, it's about 20 to 25% increase in compensation to bring those folks on board. So when you can tie EVP attributes to a financial bottom line, I think your business constituents, your business partners are going to start listening. And then likewise, once you get folks on board, what are the retention benefits from having a really strong EVP? Uh, you know, organizations that deliver on their EVP promise, 
uh, they can decrease turnover by close to 70%, and that commitment by new hires is going to be close to 30%. So go to the next slide here. So let's talk a little bit about generational differences, because not all EVPs are created equal. Not all EVPs are understood by different generations. So we have the three you know, major generations represented by our current day workforce. Uh, the boomer generation, and they have their set of core beliefs, mottos, what they look for at work, what they're perceived as, and what some of their career goals are. Gen X, they also you know, have their set of beliefs. And then we have the Gen Y millennials, which Tay had really focused on. And that Gen X picture, that, that is a bad picture. I, mean, I, I, I look back at some of my pictures, they're pretty bad, but that one is, that one is pretty bad. So I know there's a whole website dedicated to like bad, bad photos, high school photos. So that's where we pulled that one from. So when we look at millennials and EVPs, for those in the room, that's probably a little bit difficult to see, but hopefully online you're getting a good view of it. Uh, this talks about some of the generational differences between millennials and other generations. And what was surprising, this is also from uh, CEB, was that the important attributes, there wasn't necessarily a big difference between what millennials sought out and what other generations sought out. There, there's overlap between the top five. So millennials were compensation, work-life balance, future career opportunity, stability and respect, and other generations they looked at uh, also compensation, work-life balance, stability, respect, and location. So pretty much on par. When you dig a little bit deeper into the data, which we like to do at Verizon, um, we take a look at which attributes millennials selected more often and which attributes they selected less often. So while the five top EVP attributes were relatively the same, there was a correlation there that certain millennials, uh, millennials looked at certain attributes and scored them much higher. So you'll see those at the top of the page. So they scored future career opportunity 11 points higher than other generations. They looked at alignment in the job industry much higher. They looked at inclusion, diversity at a higher rate. And there's some others at the bottom where they selected less often that weren't as important to them. So location, it's a much more mobile generation. They looked at stability, and it was a, two points less. So you really have to dig into the data when you're building out an EVP and trying to understand you know, which attributes are going to be relevant to those different generations. So I really like this slide. And, and Tay brought up the point of culture. Um, so what does a company's EVP say about itself? It basically says what it's going to be like to work here. It gives you a real indication of that company's culture. And I think culture is dismissed a lot of times as just HR babble. You get HR folks in a room, you know, fluff. And the business, again, wants to say, well, what is culture? Is, is it really that important? And I thought this quote was great. It's from uh, Bill Allett who's actually the managing director at MIT's entrepreneurship, their Center for Entrepreneurship. And he's also a senior lecturer at their Sloan School of Management. So somebody who's you know, embraced a lot of top talent, I'm sure, in his career. And, and he had said that culture eats strategy for breakfast, technology for lunch, and products for dinner. And soon thereafter, everyone else too. So he says, count me amongst the completely converted. And I think that you know, for those that don't just sign on to EVPs or culture from the beginning, you have to convert them. You have to show them that it really is important. So in his role, he talks to a lot of folks you know, in this area, in the startup community, that are building out products, building out platforms. And one of the things that he really you know, touts is, what's the vision for your culture? I know what your product roadmap is. I know what your technical roadmap is. What's your culture vision? And I thought that this was a great quote to throw in there. And the picture um, I thought was, was really, really neat too. That was from a recent TechCrunch article that uh, he was quoted in. So, go to the next slide. So, 
a little bit about Verizon. So it's one thing to talk about creating an EVP, but you have to prove it. You have to prove it. And at Verizon, we do have an EVP. Um, we do have a large campus effort, first off. We looked this year, our campus program uh, enterprise-wide for our, our core headquarter functions is just a shy of 1,100. That covers off IT, engineering, finance, uh, HR, marketing, supply chain, and, and, and the like. But just about 600 of those 1,100 are interns. So Verizon is, Verizon is on a journey. So everyone thinks of Verizon as a cell phone company and not much more. We are on a journey to become a provider of technology solutions that are going to solve the world's biggest challenges. Uh, the challenges that we're going to solve are going to be through products and solutions developed by our people. We want to make sure that that employee population is empowered, and we're going to empower them through training. We're going to empower them by giving them opportunities to work in a collaborative, innovative space. And we're going to give them opportunities to work with a very diverse mix of coworkers and managers to bring these products to the market. So here are some examples of Verizon's EVP in action. The one on the left is a, uh, you know, something that goes to our military community. The one on the right is one that is used on campus and, and so forth. So you'll see I work for the company that turns bandwidth into body armor. I work for the company that helps doctors battle you know, cancer with big data. So these marketing materials are hitting on all those points that I just mentioned in our EVP. And it's showing, you know, it's living that. So that's from an advertising perspective. You know, we also have, I talked about training as being an anchor. Um, we were actually just named to training's top 10 Hall of Fame. Two years in a row, Verizon's employee trainings, training programs were ranked tops in the United States. So again, that's proving it. That's putting it into action. That is you know, showing that it's just much, much more than a marketing flyer. And you'll see you know, another um, piece that went out on, on Facebook and, and some of our Twitter pages was a profile of our chief data scientist, uh, Ashok Srivastava, who's uh, recently come to Verizon from NASA. And this shows that you know, what some of his, uh, the work that he's looking to do in terms of creating intelligent systems and really believing that technology can improve lives. So this is you know, an example of, this is the type of innovative, exciting work going on you know, at Verizon. So just some items to consider. You're sitting there saying, we need to either create an EVP or we need to redevelop our existing EVP. So some items to quickly consider. Def define the vision of your EVP. What's important to your business? What's important to your employees? What's important to the talent community that you're looking to attract? What's your top talent saying? What's, what's important to them? So you have to, you have to obviously look internally, but you have to be mindful of looking externally. So that's why sessions like today uh, that Steve and Faith and collegerecruiter.com, LinkedIn are hosting are great. There are tremendous opportunities to network understand what the pain points are in certain organizations, what's working for you, what's not working for you, what are you looking to do. So this is a tremendous opportunity for us today. Um, again, prioritize and position a realistic EVP. You don't want to you know, shoot for the stars and not be able to deliver. So I think everyone wants to you know, fix everything all at once. Pick a few things. One of the uh, training partners that we work with has said that, pick a few things. And uh, we've really you know, taken that, my colleagues and so forth. Pick a few things it is really important. Follow through, right? Make sure that whatever you're setting up, you can absolutely follow through on. Know your audience, aside from the generation considerations, different functional pools of talent have different things that are important to them. So for instance, we work closely with Universum to do studies in regards to what accounting students are saying, what are engineering students saying, what are computer science students saying? Because I can tell you that there, there are topics that resonate with engineers that the accounting students probably don't care about. So it's not enough to just say, 
well, my audience is millennials, collegiate talent. Let's focus on them. Focus on some of the sub-functions within the talent communities that you're looking to build. And then look outside of your company. Uh, no EVP is developed in a conference room or in a boardroom within your own company, within those four walls. It's really important to do your external research. I've referenced a few in here that are tremendous sources of information, best practices, and then sessions like this are great as well. NACE is also a, a tremendous uh, resource. I know some of the materials that were handed out today. There's some information on NACE. Uh, I'll be in San Antonio next month as well. Really looking forward to that. It's a tremendous organization and thought leadership consortium between the colleges and employers. And it's a great opportunity to network further. They have a few suggestions as well. Start from the inside, work your way out. Uh, take time to develop. I, I can't say that enough. So many times we, we, you want to rush and just get this out there. And like anything, if you rush and you don't take your time, then you're going to find yourself at a disadvantage. And the last two things that I just wanted to, to put up here were quotes. And they were sort of like aha moments. I, I can't tell you enough. Tim Sanders, who's actually going to be one of the, uh, the NACE keynotes next month, we talked about EVP and its impact on culture, but its impact on brand is paramount. And, and this was one of those quotes that I read and was just, it's so simple, yet it's, it's just so impactful. And I was really blown away by it. And he, he describes brand as the promise of an experience. That's truly what your brand is. And you know, he says, organizations offer the promise of an experience every single day through the way they communicate and the messages that they distribute. And that is 100% you know, true. And then finally, the last one talks about, uh, from Rob Kessler, who, who works for Enterprise Holdings, who has a very large collegiate program, was also quoted in a recent NACE article, talking about how that brand is essentially your organization's reputation. And that's the image that the company is a great place to work. And we all know that um, you know, the reputation of a company is that word of mouth on campus, well, that spreads like wildfire. When your collegiate interns or your co-ops go back to campus and talk about their summer, their experience, and what it was like to work at that company, um, that's, that's what it's really all about. And that can really make or break. Because you can differentiate yourself in two ways, positively and negatively. It's very easy to differentiate yourself negatively. But it's difficult to differentiate yourself positively. And uh, you know, hopefully a strong EVP and its impact on your brand and your culture can do that. And everyone can have you know, as successful as possible of a campus hiring program that they're looking to do. So with that, uh, my time is just about up. I thank everyone very much. Steve, Faith, thank you so much for having me. LinkedIn for hosting. Uh, this is great. I'm looking forward to trying to get over to the sushi cafeteria. I've heard. heard uh, but uh, now this has been great. So I look forward to networking with, with folks throughout the day. And any questions, I'm, I'm happy to connect offline um, via LinkedIn or, or any other means. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much. So uh, yesterday, um, Bruce got to the hotel and, and said that he'd uh, just gone for a run on some trails nearby. And uh, this is the other one. And he encountered a rattlesnake. So I think that this room is a little bit of a friend, more friendly environment than what he uh, ran into yesterday. Yeah, yeah. We don't have many rattlesnakes in New Jersey. Is it still on? I'm yeah. not sure if this is still on. We don't have many rattlesnakes in New Jersey. So, <laughs> and then uh, at the end of the run, I, I think I showed you the, uh, it was a mountain lion habitat warning. So I said, you don't have to outrun the mountain lion. You have to outrun someone else on the trail. So that's, that's the most important thing to remember. So. You, yeah, you say you don't have any rattlesnakes in New Jersey, but I'm pretty sure that The Sopranos was set there, wasn't it? They're, so they're slippery. And there's some like political yeah. stuff that's been in the news recently. Yeah, and, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think we have time for a couple of questions, if anybody has. Anybody? Bueller? No. Bueller? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So we're all here to talk about college recruiting, and I know that you've shaped your EVP to, uh, and you've looked into the data that show what college grads are interested in or what they're looking for, but have you found that any of any elements of your EVP, EVP end up backfiring with other generations? We, don't, we necessarily didn't shape the EVP, and I have to give credit. We have a tremendous uh, employment brand team that's led by one of my colleagues who you know, works with 
not only external organizations, but internally with the various lines of business when they were crafting you know, the EVP. They anchored our employment brand to our Powerful Answers campaign. So you'll see a lot of Verizon uh, adage with Powerful Answers, and that's what they anchored our employment brand to in the, in the EV, subsequent EVP. But that being said, uh, we didn't necessarily create it with the collegiate audience in mind. What we'll do is we'll tap into pieces of it and utilize those pieces on campus that will resonate most with that audience. So it really was an all-encompassing you know, lift to ensure that we were covering off all bases. Because I say you know, 1,100 uh, campus hires, at the number of you know, professional hires that we have, you know, that number is multiplied uh, significantly. So while 1,100 seems like a, a large number, it's, it's a small portion of our overall know, workforce plan, but we, we tend to concentrate on the aspects of the EVP that we feel will resonate most with that student audience. One more on the left. Yeah. Hi. Um, you started out by sort of rebranding Verizon for the audience here, and I'm just wondering how successful your rebranding has been at college campuses and when students come in for interviews. Do they come in with already an understanding of how, Ver how Verizon is much broader than what we think automatically, which is cell phones? Yeah, so that's, it's the pros and cons of a strong external brand. And Verizon has a tremendous external brand. Most of that external brand is in the cell phone space. And, and the students that are at college now, they grew up with the Can You Hear Me Now campaign, right? They, they grew up only knowing Verizon as that cell phone provider. So a big portion of our communication to our collegiate audience is around that rebranding effort and making sure they understand that if you come to Verizon, these are the things that you're gonna have a chance to be a part of and work on. I, I sort of say it's like making a left turn with a cruise ship. It's, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, it's a multi-year journey that we're on, but we have a, a tremendous amount of uh, you know, backing from the business, from our internal partners that, are, that realize it's a multi-year journey. And once you give these students experience at Verizon during the summer, you know, their word of mouth, again, is better than any flyer marketing campaign that, that we can come up with. So we want to make sure that we're giving them robust, meaningful projects that are part of you know, the journey that Verizon's on. Cool. Thank you so much, Thank Bruce. You. Thank you.